Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV, Velocities of Music, the best kept secret in music reviews. A while back, Tom, we mm -hmm. reviewed an album from MIA. Yeah. I think it was her third album. Yep. Now we get a chance to review her fourth album, Matangi. I think that's how you say it. It's either that or Matangi, and I, I really don't think it's Matangi. I know. Matangi. I don't know how to pronounce any of her album names, yeah. really. I. Yeah, um, it's it's a Hindu up. goddess is what yes. it's named after, mm -hmm. and it's also a play play on her birth name. Mm -hmm. um, but regardless, it's her fourth album. She's been around for a while now. MIA has been um, actually got a lot of attention with her first couple of albums, and then yeah. um, shifted her sound. And Tom, you know a lot about MIA or her background and where she comes from. Can you tell us how Matangi kind of differs in sound from her earlier work? Yeah, sure. Well, one thing that I noticed for sure is I thought that the I thought this album was a little more bass heavy. Yeah, I felt like the bass and the beats took a little bit more of the focus and really the beats in general took a little bit more Absolutely. focus. On her previous album that we reviewed, I felt like there was a lot of kind of excess. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a lot of layers going on, things kind of swirling around. Mm -hmm. Now she's obviously still experimenting with some of the same musical styles mm -hmm. um, with that, that rap and hip hop mixed with kind of like a dub right. um, and Eastern influences in there musically. Um, but she still, she, one thing she does is she makes it very abrasive. Yes. And that's her MO. Yeah, it, that's, totally. I, mean, that, I mean, throughout her, her discography, I feel mm -hmm. like that's that's been something that you could say about all of her albums. That's definitely true. But here I feel like she's trying to to do, make that effect with fewer layers. Gotcha. Um, she, you know, the 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 beat to me is very much the focus of these songs, mm -hmm. and then her her vocals on top, and everything else is just kind of supporting those two elements. Mm -hmm. Now. Not to say that I wouldn't call this album minimalistic no, by any not, means, not at all. but I think it's closer to that end of the spectrum than some of her past work has been, and it's a little bit thicker. Mm -hmm. uh, she, I think, she's just doing a little bit more with a little bit less, right. if that makes sense. Right, absolutely. And I think that I mean, you nailed it. It's the beats. The beats mm -hmm. are where this album seems to be more focused on. There's been a trend in music recently um, of having you know a bigger beat presence, a bigger mm -hmm. bass presence. Um, and honestly, I think that's probably because I think more people are buying like Dre beats headphones. Phones and, yeah, and popular. True. It's popular to have headphones now. I mean, people's technology has improved, so therefore music kind of moves to fit that, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, but Matangi definitely embodies more chaotic beat structures mm -hmm. and lots of um, electronic melodies. I would say that are are abrasive and definitely yes. are probably in the mid-range end of the spectrum yeah. as far as production is concerned. Where this album, um, I think it's interesting, is M.I.A. does a lot of... Um, she, she has this mixture of when she's singing in the choruses, and then mm -hmm. um, also, um, you know, I think her rap style is is, is unique and original enough um, mm -hmm. that she's gotten a lot of attention just because her sound is just so her own. And, yeah. and that's something that I've always valued about her and what mm -hmm. made what what makes me enjoy listening to her music. Now, it's the problem that I always encounter is when you get to consistency. Yes. Because there are some tracks here where I feel like her, her vocals are just terrible. Yeah, I um, completely agree. But there's also some times where I feel like she does a very good job. Mm -hmm. I don't know what your experience was there. I I had the same experience. And, and especially first listen, this album was very abrasive mm -hmm. and tough to get through right. for me. Now, I came up on it a little bit. I kind of got used to it. I was able to pick out parts that I liked. Mm -hmm. But the problem for me was that not only was it a little inconsistent between tracks, it would be inconsistent within the same track. Right. Uh, for example, like tracks three and four, Only One You and Warriors. There are parts of those songs I really like and parts that bother the crap out yeah, of me. Absolutely. And it's because she's trying to be abrasive. I understand that's part of the style. It's part of what she's going for. And I respect that from an artistic standpoint. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a good listening experience for everyone. Because what she does... She has these abrupt cuts and these kind of jarring tangents in the production. For sure. And then her vocal presentation uh, sometimes is very whiny, very nasally, kind of obnoxious, particularly on, like, Come Walk With Me. Yeah, absolutely. Which I actually think had some good writing in it, but just the way she presents it kills me. Yeah, and that's probably the catchiest track on the it album. It is. It, but then you get to, like, sorry, I got a hair in my face driving me nuts. Okay, sorry about that. Then tra it there. You, you <laughs> bastard. Uh, track seven, Exodus, I think is definitely a highlight. Her vocals sound mm -hmm. very nice. Mm -hmm. and it I features think, The weekend, which yeah. might, might actually help. Yeah, it helps kind of back yeah, up that, that vocal croon going through those verses and choruses there, but uh, but that's how I feel like works. Yeah, it's not quite as edgy, but that's sure. what I liked about it. It was a little bit more smooth, but I don't think it was sacrificing mm -hmm. the things that make MIA unique as an artist. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to see more of that. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that whenever you have an artist, I mean, she is trying to be as experimental as possible mm -hmm. on this album. She's super abrasive. Sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. What that makes your listening experience is very hit or miss. I feel mm -hmm. like sometimes I'm really enjoying this album, and the next track I'm just ready to turn it off yeah. and getting frustrated. And that's just, that's kind of part and parcel with how she, I mean, she's going for that sort of appeal. Mm -hmm. Some people like that. Some people really get into that, and by all means, if you're into that sound, and you want it to be super abrasive. I mean, Kanye West kind of did that with Yeezus. Yeah. Um, and, and I kind of do a comparison there because that's that's the whole point. It's supposed to be abrasive. It's mm -hmm. supposed to be in your face. It's just I felt like Yeezus had a lot more consistency and professionalism in the production where this takes it to extremes mm -hmm. that are, are just unnecessary. Plus, this album is 57 minutes long and I think I feel like it's a little unwarranted. It, I mean, it definitely for, is. For the quality that that's, she's presenting here, this is probably a 40 to 45 minute mm -hmm. album. Especially once you get to like track 9, Boom Skit. Yes. And the next few tracks after that, Double Bubble oh Trouble. My. Don't, don't even get me started on that song. I, <laughs> I hate it. I don't know. I don't know about track 11. It's it's Yala, but it's YOLO. Yeah, and I actually singing. don't I, mind that song until you get to the end and she starts <laughs> doing that little, the little monologue. Yeah, the monologue. It is, uh, it just, my brain just melts. It, do, it just doesn't sound good. Another complaint I have, which actually I don't even know if this is a complaint, but I still think it points out a big fault to this album is that you have Exodus right in the middle of the album and then Sexodus right at the end of the album. Featuring the weekend. Yeah. Both <laughs> featuring the weekend. So I listen to those two songs back to back several times and let me tell you the difference is minimal. Yeah. There is a difference. There's a slight difference in just like the production and kind of the mixing, what layers are there, but it's not nearly different enough to warrant having two five minute tracks <laughs> of virtually the same thing. Again, I mean, a 57 minute album that yeah. probably only justifies 40 but, to 45 But minutes. the funny thing is, is that to me, those were the two best tracks because they were the damn same. Well, and they're featuring the weekend. <laughs> 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 uh, wait, wait, one question though is, were those tracks featuring The weekend? I think they were, Tom. Okay. I think they all were. Alright, thanks for clearing that up. So, with all this inconsistency, Tom, what was your overall experience with it? Uh, not good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is not an album I enjoyed overall. It had its few redeeming moments, but the problem is that there were more moments that bothered me, and the moments that did bother me bothered the hell out of me. Right. Like, really brought it down for me. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a 59. Yep. I'm a little higher than you. I do enjoy a lot of... I, I mean, her originality is very important to me. Yeah. And M.I.A.'s sound, especially on, on this record, is is original to a fault, almost. Mm -hmm. And and I like that about her. However, I am also I also care a lot about album the album listening experience. I care mm -hmm. a lot about consistency in the record, having a very balanced play that you can play from beginning to end without skipping a track. And that simply just isn't here on Matangi. It's mm -hmm. just not there. So I'm going to go 65, which means right. I believe that if she were to clear a few of these issues up, this would easily be an upper 70s album, mm -hmm. um, which is which is what our criteria is for good. Yeah. Um, so we're a little off there, but what this averages out is low 60s, which is an album we typically wouldn't recommend to you guys. However, if you've listened to MIA's previous three records and like them, absolutely go out and check this out. Or if you're into something that's just a little bit more abrasive and a challenging listen that you get mm -hmm. to pick apart, this would be a good album for you to, t to check out and give us some feedback on at www.velocitiesandmusic.com or youtube.com slash velocitiesandmusic. As always, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and let us know what albums you'd like to see us review on this channel. I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV, moving music critique forward.